basically just like rural people. I don't know if you've ever been to like rural America, but like it's not really that they're bad people, but it's kind of like sad out there. Yeah. You know, there's like nothing going on. Yeah. You know, it's like the whole like it's like it's like the whole world. Like you turn on the TV, you see all this Hollywood stuff and all this social media stuff and all this like, you know, you know, all that lifestyle. And then you look around, you're like a little shithole town and it's like, there's nothing here. Hey, by the way, um, does it bother you that Andrew Yang doesn't wear a tie? No. It doesn't? It's the stupidest thing to care about. I don't even know. Not even a little bit? Not even. I mean, no, because, you know, the thing about it is like, you know, I I just, I I, no, not, not at all. Yeah, well, and not the fact that he's not a politician. That doesn't bother you? I actually like, prefer that. <laughs> prefer that he's not a politician. We need a leader to uh, lead politicians. Uh, I think he put out a tweet yesterday like saying something like, you know, getting us out of this mess, the solutions to getting us out of this mess are not going to come from inside the machines. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So well, that makes sense. You know, uh, to me, that makes sense because like Trump is such an odd outsider. I feel like the antidote is like the opposite <laughs> outsider. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like, you know, if people vote for someone like Biden, you know what's going to happen? It's going to be like, it's going to it's gonna be like another generation of young progressive voters who are just going to like, be like, fuck it. You know, I'm done with politics. Yeah. You're going to lose them, um, you know, for the next elections. You're going to have, and you're not really going to have an inspirational four years. You know what I mean? There's not going to have a lot of ideas. I mean, if you listen to Biden, he's talking about like going back to to the 70s, you know, like when he used to get along with, yeah. you know, Republicans. Like that's all it's going to be. And it's just, you know, and that's, yeah. In my opinion, the fact that Biden's even like an option, you know, being number one in some polls, it just kind of shows. In like every poll. Okay, in every poll. It yeah. just shows that how, it shows how politically disengaged people actually mm-hmm. are, even if they know who the candidates are. They don't know what they're about. They think Andrew Yang's a billionaire. They think, you know, Tom Steyer <laughs> and Andrew Yang and Bloomberg belong oh, in the same, same. category. Yeah, it's and sad. they just say Biden because they remember his name. It's sad. And, you, you know, know part, part, of the, part, of the, part of the thing that's created this situation is, is the Trump situation. So many people got burnt out. Mm-hmm. That they're just like, I don't want to listen to the news anymore. Definitely. You know, uh, yeah, that makes there's, a lot of, there's a lot of people. You know, I was going to be one of those people. I was going into this election season thinking, like, you know what? I'll kind of pay attention just to see what's up, but I'm not really going to pay attention. I'm not going to watch the TV shows or anything. So it's kind of surprising that I'm actually out here volunteering for a presidential candidate. Yeah, a lot of people have gotten, I think, less politically engaged since Mm -hmm. 2016. I think 2016, everyone was, like, really politically engaged. Yeah. And then I think this is where me and you disagree on because you believe people got more politically engaged. Well, pe- but some, I think they got... That's I, from my perspective. Because like, when you look on social media, like the same people who are really talking about politics, at least in my social media mm-hmm. spheres, have all stopped. Yeah. Like after 2016... Just burn out. Just stop. No one cares. No one watches debates. Yeah. And most people aren't even going to vote. I know people are like... I. I know some people like who are looking into politics. Like they'll be like, Andrew Yang's a really great guy. Like I like Andrew mm-hmm. Yang, no, no. but then they're like, but I'm just exhausted. Don't care to vote. Mm-hmm. Not motivated. Yeah, because 2016 just screwed everyone's yeah, eye. Yeah, like no yeah. one was expecting it. There's a lot of Bernie voters who were let down, you know, and um, Hillary voters ultimately were let down, and you know, I get it, but yeah, y- y- you know. Uh, for every for every person, there were some people that got engaged, you know. But it's like mm-hmm. it's like you know, definitely the outrage voters, the ones that got pissed, exactly, because yeah. there was a big turnout in the in the last midterm. But I don't even think that's politically engaged. I think that's just basically like people were like, I hate Trump they so much. I'm not necessarily following the news, but I'll vote f- against the person I hate. Like nowadays, there's more people voting against things than they are voting for things. So and the midterm is not a really good indication of like who's because like when Obama in his first term mm-hmm. he the the Democrats lost during the midterms they lost the House but yeah. he still won the election yeah with flying mm-hmm. colors so like it's not it's really an indica- yeah it's not an indication of and because also like and that's one of the things I was bringing up was in the midterms the Democrats spent so much but only got the House right like they didn't even get the Senate they lost True. more in the Senate and also you look at Virginia where they. 
They did a Crushed. lot in this. Yeah, but also Virginia voted against Trump. So, you know, these aren't things that really, like, necessarily are, like, yeah. you know, indications. It doesn't tell you the whole yeah, story. Yeah, exactly. It's not, like. <clears throat> it doesn't tell you the whole yeah. story. Yeah, and let me explain, like, the whole politically engaged, uh, I guess, what you idea. said. Yeah. I won't say, and, and you're definitely right. Like, the reason why, like, personally, like, I mean, you can even go back on this channel. I actually, one of my first ever podcasts, it was basically just a conversation, was before and after the first Hillary Trump debate. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was one of the most entertaining debate sequences mm -hmm. of, you know, my life, <laughs> personally. Sure. And uh, to watch Hillary get roasted was hilarious, <laughs> but it also made me super nervous because you can even, you know, see in that video, like, we're all kind of just shocked, like, mm -hmm. Trump won that debate. Right. You know, and it just continued debate after debate. Just mm -hmm. Trump kept calling her out on stuff that was true. And that's the main reason, yeah. that's one of the many reasons I could not support Hillary Clinton. Mm -hmm. um, because her history is just full of problems, bad decisions. Yeah. And, you know, like yeah. bad decision making is not the type of thing you want to have in the White House. Now, a lot of Hillary supporters, they, they, you know, they were like trying to whitewash that. Like, oh, but you know this, oh, but that. But I'm like, no, you can't, you can't just wash away the Iraq war. Like, like, you know what I mean? Like. That was not the right move at that particular time to, to, to make, in my opinion. Some people might mm -hmm. disagree, but but you know that <clears throat> you know the country paid a big cost for that, and it, it, it unleashed like you know a sequence of events that's like hurting people, like even to this day in that region. So you know you can't just like pretend like that didn't happen. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So and and that's just one thing, and then and then you know other things. You know like one of, one of the big one of the big issues with donald trump was donald trump with women like democrats should have been able to crush him on that because he is a sh he's really shitty to women throughout his whole career but hillary clinton was the wrong person to make that point because she's going home to to bill clinton mm -hmm. like yeah. a guy who is also you know yeah. connected to all kinds of shady stuff with women so like you, you can't score points there. That was like one of the main areas where we should have been able to score points, but we couldn't score the points because, you know, we Did just had the wrong person, you know, to make that point. And, yeah. and, and, you know, there's just a whole, with Hillary Clinton, there's just a whole list of, of these types of issues that, you know, that made her a very weak candidate. In my opinion, even if Hillary would have won, it would have unleashed like chaos. If Hillary would have won, do you, can you imagine like Trump's base? like how crazy they would have gone yeah. and how much how much more aggressive they would have been four years later. They'd be probably, protesting. They would, probably would have won. The next, the yeah, next exactly. That's what I'm thinking too. Like yeah. they probably would have like, you know, Engaged. it would have like pushed so many more people to the right. He would have kept doing rallies. Mm -hmm. He would have continued to rile probably up. Probably would have had like a Trump TV station to like oh, yeah. blast out his anti Hillary stuff, you know. He probably would have yeah. gotten more supporters because I think so too, because a lot of people would have like looked at like, damn it, Hillary won, you know, like and would have, you know. Because people support who Trump is, not really what he stands for. They just support the kind of guy he is right. and what he brings to Washington, which is yeah. the complete opposite of that. Yeah, you yeah. Know? I mean, if you think about it, like, and it's full, so funny. Like, a couple years ago, I it was very easy to find this article, like, in the paper online, but now you can't. It's like they washed it offline. Oh, what was it? Um, Obama, when he was in college, wrote an article about Donald Trump. Oh, And really? he said, if, my, if I can't be like Donald Trump, I hope my children can be one day. Oh, wow. And it was such a really cool, read because it was like one of his college thesis or something and it was online for a long time and now it's like so that. hard wow. to find wow. but it's like a really good read but um but one thing i think is like you're right donald trump the essence of donald trump it's literally what when you think of american success you don't think about bill gates before in the past you didn't think about bill gates you didn't mm -hmm. think about anyone else you thought about donald trump mm -hmm. i mean he was in everything he was so publicized he was exactly he was so publicized he may have not been as successful <laughs> but he was so he, he was played everything. a good one on TV. Yeah, exactly. He knew how to <laughs> play himself like, I'm successful, you want me. So a lot of Americans built on that. Oh, like yeah. He's a successful businessman, mm -hmm. wants to run our country. And another thing is Donald Trump made a lot of ambiguous statements oh, yeah. that a lot of people could you get can behind. You can interpret it whichever way. Exactly. Like two, two people can listen to the same thing and like come away with like completely different ideas <laughs> of what was said. Because he, you know, he says a lot without saying anything, you know? So it's like... 
you just kind of fill in the blanks like okay you know this is he's talking to me <laughs> exactly yeah. um like he's actually speaking to me like i've been spoken to before not like these politicians who are just like and he stood up for people know. who felt like they've not been getting someone to stand up for which yeah, i think too. is something that's basically the the secret sauce i think yeah. is what he what he did was he basically went to went to people who who were feeling powerless you know like basically just like rural people i don't know if you've ever been to like rural america but like it's not really that they're bad people but it's kind of like sad out there yeah you know there's like nothing going on yeah you know it's like the whole like it's like it's like the whole world like you turn on the tv you see all this hollywood stuff and all this social media stuff and all this like you know you know all that lifestyle and then you look around your like little whole town and it's like Hey, there's nothing here, you know. Like yeah, the disconnect. It's even. completely disconnected yeah. from like from like the the successful parts of the country. Yeah. So he went in there and he told them a story, like you know, like I'm gonna make you guys feel powerful again, which is like, yeah, you know, and he, that's basically yeah. what it is. It's like a lot of people, you know, feel powerless, and then and then you know they get they they feed off of that, like okay, now now we matter, even though even though we matter for the wrong things, and I think a lot of Trump voters don't even like them. Oh, yeah. Honestly, they they just they're just looking at it as like it doesn't really matter. At least like at least we got a, a weapon like that we, like we hate Democrats more. Yeah, exactly. So like you know we're relevant. You know, mm-hmm. <laughs> I think like if you look at some of the Trump supporters and like you look at like these rural areas, I think yeah. they have a vote. I think they have a valid statement to make. I feel like 